However, there are those who are watching you and are listening to you, but cannot help but transport themselves to the blackface incident in 2012. Do you think that you may have a credibility crisis? Not at all. In fact, um, I don't think there's anyone in Parliament at the moment that didn't play some kind of an activist role in the past. So that's point number one. Do you regret that incident? I do not, and I, I look, uh, I think, as an activist, I've been uh, very outspoken before. Remember, you, you're a public representative right now, and Correct. you have and to... and you're a journalist. Indeed, and I'm actually doing that job of a journalist because this is a matter that became topical but, very recently, and I'm saying to you, but then you structures of the Democratic Alliance... About, this structures of about the Democratic know. Alliance... I'm sorry, you're not being truthful. Matter. I'm sorry, you no, they haven't. No, no. They haven't. Um, <laughs> they haven't. <laughs> so they didn't condemn a blackface incident in the in the Democratic Youth Alliance. And now for two thirds of the interview, you're speaking about something that has been explained. It's been um, it's been discussed. The DA has commented about it. I have commented about it. I've said that today I might do things differently. I said that three weeks ago already. Yeah, but you also say and that you don't regret you it. Are not being, you are not being truthful about the way... The so recently, Chairman on the Portfolio Police in the Parliament, Ian Cameron, has actually been battling some really strong crisis regarding this 12-year-old video which features him in an Afri-Forum blackface protest where they were protesting in front of Blade in Zemanzi's office regarding a case of racial targeting at the University of Pretoria. Let's listen to this really intense interview between Ian Cameron and this reporter from Newsroom and I'll be back for some really interesting analysis on the actual video where we get to watch what Ian Cameron said 20 years ago regarding the protest and a short report on this saga. Yeah. Ian Cameron, you are now the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee of Police in Parliament. It's not a, um, it's not a small position. It's not a position uh, to be taken lightly. However, there are those who are watching you and are listening to you, but cannot help but transport themselves to the blackface incident in 2012. Do you think that you may have a credibility crisis as chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Police? No, actually uh, not at all. In fact, um, I don't think there's anyone in Parliament at the moment that didn't play some kind of an activist role in the past. So that's point number one. Point number two, anyone uh, that that would go and do a little bit of homework about that specific campaign would see that there was zero ill intent and it was against uh, racial discrimination, which is, I think, very important to mention. I've read some sweeping statements about it, and it's clear to me that people are utterly ill-informed. And then thirdly, apart from that, is that my focus is crime. It always has been. It's been violent crime for over the last decade. It's what I've dedicated my entire career to. And I've worked across every single cultural, racial, and community line in this country, and I still do. Uh, just today, I visited yet another family in one of the poorest townships in the Western Cape that uh, that lost a beloved daughter uh, not too long ago when she was burnt in a trolley bin. So uh, I, I am not going to uh, have myself distracted uh, by sideshows. Our focus is to stop 85 people from being murdered every day in South Africa. And, uh, and once we start addressing that, um, I think we need to start uh, looking at the other major crime crises that we have in this country. Do you regret that incident? I do not. And I, I look, uh, I think, as an activist, I've been uh, very outspoken before. Um, uh, I, I'm not, uh, yeah, I, I, I was an activist. As I said to you earlier, um, I don't think there's anyone in Parliament that was not an activist before. Something I find very interesting is that while you and I are having this discussion, you are not asking about the fact that uh, on a day like today, 87 people were killed. 
it's interesting to me that you also don't ask the question about what the merit of that specific campaign was mm -hmm. and why it was done. So it seems to me that you're only going on face value, and I think it would be better if you approached it more objectively. Well, let me be objective about it because structures of the Democratic Alliance, and I'm taking you back now to 2014, when... I'm sorry, is this related to the Police Portfolio Committee? It, no, no. You want me to no, justify no, no, I'm, why I'm asking you the question about blackface because you are trying to no, no, marry I'm, I'm what sorry, you no, say I'm asking, was an activist role. I'm asking role. because blackface you said to me we're is a very offensive issue. We're discussing policing and crime tonight. No, no, Ian Cameron, um, I think Ian you're, Cameron, you're not... You, you're no, saying I'm, to I'm, me, I'm I need sorry. to justify why I'm asking you this question. Remember, no, you I are a public, represent, you, you're a public representative right now. And Correct. you have and to... And you're a journalist. Indeed. And I'm actually doing that job of a journalist because this is a matter that became topical but, very recently. And I'm saying to you, but then structures you of the Democratic Alliance... About, but structures of about the tonight. Democratic Alliance... I'm sorry, you're not being truthful. Matter. I'm sorry, you... No, they haven't. No, no. They haven't. Um, they haven't. <laughs> So they didn't condemn a blackface incident in the, in the Democratic Youth Alliance, in the Dasso incident back in 2014. You, first of all, just explain to me, what does this have to do with crime in South Africa? Right now, what you are doing is swaying no, 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 the no, no. conversation away from... No, I'm, I'm what... not. I'm saying to you the following. I'm saying to you that you asked me for an interview about crime and policing. And now for two thirds of the interview, you're speaking about something that has been explained. It's been, um, it's been discussed. The DA has commented about it. I have commented about it. I've said that today I might do things differently. I said that three weeks ago already. Yeah, but you also say that and you don't regret you it. Are not being, you are not being truthful about the way that you are approaching this interview. You told me that tonight we were discussing crime. We were dis discussing that. And I find it very sad that we're not talking about the children being murdered in Langa and Yanga, but you choose to rather focus on something that was against racial discrimination, by the way, which I haven't heard you say or acknowledge in any way. And, and, and I think that is utterly unfair of you. I also think it would be unfair of you to challenge me um, uh, without uh, having been truthful about what the discussion would entail. And saying that I'm a public representative is also quite quite unfair because that basically means that according to your definition, I would need to um, stand and receive any kind of criticism, uh, whether unfair or not, just because I am a public representative. I approach my work fairly and objectively. I've done so over the years. Um, I have assisted in putting hundreds, if not more, very serious, violent offenders behind bars across all groups. And uh, if you've walked a day in my shoes, then you can judge me. But please don't make assumption about who and what I am uh, because of one thing that has been taken completely out of context and you haven't acknowledged what the merit of a specific uh, action was more than a decade ago. If you want to judge me, spend a day in my shoes and then you can, you can, you're more than welcome to. Well, look, for what it's worth, at least you have addressed the matter because in the first instance, you said you don't regret it, but uh, you also say that given another chance, perhaps you would have acted differently. No, no, I said I have, it's now more than a decade later. I have, I, have, I have also developed, I'm older, I'm not an activist anymore. Um, and, and therefore I think it's important to acknowledge you would have noticed if you researched it properly that three weeks ago I said the same thing and so did the DA and we also said that times have changed and the way that we um, uh, communicate certain things that we feel strongly about have also changed and as times change we adapt. Um, so uh, it, again um, I think it's a, it's a very unfair approach of yours and I think you've actually um, detracted value from the huge and important oversight role that we're meant to actually be playing regarding crime as a portfolio committee. And, and I'm so grateful for the committee that we have because yesterday 
uh, uh, despite different cultural uh, approaches, political views, etc., we've got a committee that aren't sidelined by sideshows, but that are actually focused on fighting crime for all the people of South Africa. Ian Cameron, let me thank you very much for your time. Brilliant, really intense interview. But really, before we go further, let's watch the actual video from 12 years ago during the Afri Forum protest featuring Ian Cameron and his speech against the racial targeting Afri Forum was actually protesting against 12 years ago. Afri Forum youth on Monday organized a small protest outside the Higher Education Minister's office in Pretoria. They demonstrated against the University of Pretoria's alleged racial policy of not accepting any more white students into the 2012 veterinary science program. Protesters painted themselves black as a symbol of what they call racial classification at the institution. The University of Pretoria that aren't allowing uh, white students to study veterinary science there, they rejected after applying, of, we representing about, I think it's 73 students um, that applied and they were rejected because of the fact that they're white. Um, we know this because they eventually, after a big struggle, told us that the department explained to them that they won't let more white people study or they won't let white people study, there needs to be more blacks studying veterinary sciences. They delivered a memorandum of demands to the department's Diane Parker. Um, I am accepting this memorandum on behalf of the Minister of Higher Education and Training and we will take the matter forward with it and uh, we'll have a discussion on it and we will um, refer back to you. The youth organization said it would keep contacting the department until all students are given fair chance at the institution. Tepole Sola, Eyewitness News, Pretoria. Yeah, yeah, interesting. So it's really, it's really strange how, you know, the past seems to have been hunting some of the DA members uh, um, like, you know, Renato Gauss and uh, Ian Cameron. It's quite unfortunate anyway, but this is actually a really sensitive one, really sensitive issue, especially to the new minister. Uh, I really hope that he's not going to be distracted and also able to commit to um, excellence in light of this. Uh, like um, uh, Neil DP has actually said, this GNU is going to be a government of blackmails and scandals. And that's the way, um, according to him, we'll be you know, having to really understand what it means to have a government of national unity uh, in South Africa. But anyway... Um, we know that um, this issue started um, from on June the 21st, right? When uh, old clips and images of Ian Cameron in blackface were circulating on X, the former Twitter app. And it says that this message is actually originated from an Afri Forum youth pro protest outside the office of Blade in Zimande, the Minister of Higher Education and Training, as a then. So it actually says that the protest was organized in response to allegations that the University of Pretoria was engaging in racial targeting by allegedly refusing admission to white students in favor of black students. So this is where the crux of the problem began. And Afri Forum took up the case to try to protest against what it called racial targeting by using a blackface. So why is blackface? Why is the use of blackface the problem? Let's keep on understanding this. But anyway, he said, he said that the major process was specifically in regards of the veterinary science program, right? There was this footage, as I've just shown now, of Afri Forum youth members and their parents painting their faces black during the protest. And it was actually broadcast on several media outlets, including images of Ian Cameron, who is now the DA member of parliament. Now, at the time... Ian Cameron actually stated, right, to the media that the white students were actually rejected. They actually uh, rejected applying that 73 students altogether because of the fact that they were white. And he said that they were told that the department wouldn't let them study because there needed to be more black students studying veterinary science, right? So he said that the Afri Forum group subsequently then delivered a memorandum to the Department of Higher Education and Training. Like we know, Rian Cameron has always argued that he's actually been an activist for, or, you know, ever since he's been active in, in the political space in South Africa. So this Afri Forum protest was just one of those episodes of his activism that seems to now be haunting him. But anyway, Higher Education Director General uh, Gweb Kwande actually addressed the admissions policy in an interview with Pretoria News, stating that 
uh, there was a need to educate people about the sharing of resources and addressing certain inequalities created by South Africa's past, all right? And the admission policy at the Institute was based on a core principle of the constitution of the Institute, which aimed at creating equal opportunities for everybody, all right? So now, according to numerous analysts anyway, why blackface seems to be a problem is the fact that blackface involves non-black individuals darkening their skin in a deliberate attempt to mimic black people. This practice is actually rooted in racism and gained prominence through white minstrels who appropriated and exaggerated black culture for their own profit. All right. So that's why blackface seems to be, uh, you know, a crisis, especially in its interpretation in South Africa, which is racially sensitive. And we know that from its history. But anyway, in South Africa, there's this comedian and actor, Leon Schuster, who actually acknowledged that he has ceased using blackface upon realizing its racist implications. And known for, you know, candid camera pranks, Schuster actually frequently portrayed various characters and races in his popular films. But anyway, in another interview with Sunday Times, Schuster actually also remarked that on Twitter, which is now X, there were calls to avoid blackface, and it's totally unacceptable. And he said that it was black individuals who raised these concerns, and it is important to heed that their, their advice. Continuing with blackface would lead to significant witticism, and also, like you know, he actually also says that in the past it may not it may not have been contentious, but I no longer engage in blackface. I cannot do it. No actor today would. It is simply racist, says uh, Leon Schuster. So anyway, that's where we are with the whole um, saga with Ian Cameron. I really hope that this issue with blackface is not going to be um, a major distraction to his uh, efforts to try to rid police, South Africa's police, of corruption and, you know, all the whole malfunctionings of the police uh, in South Africa. But anyway, what do you guys think? I think this has actually been a, a widely circulated video around. I thought to do a little bit more uh, interpretation to look at the multiple sides of the debate coming from 12 years ago and also the main interview and really help us understand why blackface um, you know, became a source of uproar both for black South Africans and also white South Africans as this case evolved. But anyway, share your thoughts. What do you think about this video? Share your thoughts in the comments.